to this morning's session uh, by pressing record and saying good morning on the video um, for this first 50-minute uh, session uh, of this course, which is English 4, as you well know. Um, and uh, this morning, the first 50 minutes, uh, I'm essentially going to look through um, the Canvas site um, and I will go through quickly look. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think that's a very good uh, uh, idea that you were present, definitely. Um, uh, I would prefer it, I think. I have yet to try it because of class size. Uh, this is a question from the wall in case you, you can't see on the video down here. Uh, last semester, we were all in the video all the time. I think it's well worth doing, Marlena. Um, I'm quite happy for this morning if, uh, if you just want to take a back seat while I quickly go through, uh, but there's no reason to not video in and audio in whenever you want to. I'm, I'm very happy at sessions like this one where I'm uh, just going through stuff. Uh, if you want to chill, uh, that's Toad's call. And for you, Marlene, obviously, you, you know, and Louise as well, you know this stuff. Yeah. So uh, perhaps what we'll say is I, I'm going to tell you when we're in sort of uh, discursive mode. Okay. Um, and sometimes I think it's 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 quite okay to for you to just be far more responsive and receptive and uh, grab a coffee. So that's totally cool this morning. Okay. Um, task one: You're going to be in groups, uh, but what I can then ask you is to come back into the class, and we can all video in, and uh, it gives us the opportunity to do a class discussion. Uh, which we haven't been doing where we've got a group of, say, 20, 30, 40 people because uh, it doesn't really move uh, well enough. Uh, but I'm hoping you're going to want to do that. And I'm hoping you're going to want to butt in uh, for this. <laughs> Please make it so. Um, OK, so let's go home. Uh, now, some of you, I see you're all 504. I got questions about there being 104 yesterday. So even though you, Louise, for example, I know you're a one to seven, um, we're all um, put together in this course, as far as I know. Um, so just to start off with, uh, when uh, they gave me that question yesterday, I was like, okay, I don't think there is a 104. I think they've all been put into 504 because that's the course that's running. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we'll just be using the underlisting. Uh, uh, button over here and we have access to our group rooms. Um, I'm literally going to start off by, um, and I'll make any notes for anybody who has questions as we go along. Uh, I'm going to come back to um, uh, these sort of details, but let's have a, a look first of all. The home landing page for this course could be different from how James would have done it, is um, straight into modules. Uh, the course is divided, the text and culture part, which is a continuation of English 2, which is funnily enough what some of you are doubling up and doing at the same time, three of you at least, um, uh, is running concurrently. And where uh, English 2 really, um, uh, this is something you know un for me that I'm really working on because I'm new for those of you who don't know me from Sussex University in uh, the UK. Uh, whereas in, and this will be interesting for you who are doing both at the same time, uh, English uh, 2 uses, um, when you do it with me, only texts that are for use in the classroom, uh, whether it's all the way up to year 10, but nothing is potentially sort of a more advanced text. Um, and so the focus is on um, reading for uh, practice and use in the classroom. Uh, and um, uh, we go through everything from picture books up to the most advanced no novels, are really novels um, or um, novellas that could be read by, uh, in the UK, potentially year seven or eight. Um, uh, whereas here, we kick off from that uh, and we start to look at, it's, it's got sort of posh titles, don't be scared by that. Um, we're going to look through sort of... Uh, Sort of some British and American lit and history of with some texts. Uh, um, and what we do is we do look at texts that could be used in more advanced classrooms. Um, but we look at them um, with the view to then um, making them relevant um, 
here we're for five to ten i do know but i think a lot of the issues will still be issues um, that could be relevant for those of you who might be teaching further down in five to sevens in tweens in middle schools as well um, so uh, where we've chosen texts like robinson crusoe for example uh, which is number one on the list um, that's also, uh, and I'll be bringing in and showing you, and you'll see in the, the presentations, there'll be pictures, because I take pictures of books instead of getting things from the internet. Morning, Mata. Um, they are available in uh, illustrated versions, graphic novels, comics, children's classics, etc. So um, uh, whilst we have um, a, a lot more context involved, and it's a lot more challenging, for you as fourth years and some of the um, cultural texts we'll be looking at like today. Um, you can see we've got a political philosopher on the list there in Thomas Hobbes uh, and his Leviathan. We'll still be looking to um, uh, bring those themes into the classroom, uh, ask uh, uh, questions uh, and make them relevant uh, in, in a school situation whilst also working on your own competence. Um, so up here, we've got the modules. I'm going to click over to the syllabus. Shaboom. Good morning. Uh, Emna Plan. Uh, now, you've probably all seen this, um, so it's not exactly going to be uh, any full of any su surprises. Um, uh, Fog Plan on Fingers, Biggie Poor, yada, 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 da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, I think most of this is quite clear. What we need to look at is uh, how, uh, uh, let's have a look at uh, the subject uh, is comprised of or consists of two themes. Text, society and culture, uh, number one, often translated as literature, society and culture. If we link that to LK06. Uh, and we do have these four descriptives. Uh, which are societal, historical and cultural expressions in English speaking lands. Hence our look at, uh, it says British and American um, literature. There's also a section which will be world literature. I do want to problematize that kind of very simple dividing up of the world into British and American. We don't like that, um, but we're going to use it. And at the same time, we're going to say, just be careful with this, with these kind of labels. Um, uh, critical and analytical um, uh, till naming, I'm going to say approaches to uh, literature and other texts. And we're definitely going to be doing that. We're not going to be doing highfalutin theory, not too much. Um, but we will touch on, because um, I'm a literature specialist, we will touch on, um, you know, things like, you know, okay, what are cultural relativist approaches, Marxist approaches, post-colonialism I think is an issue that we need to approach and colonialism I really think they're, they're quite relevant for the world today uh, and definitely in secondary school are things that should be discussed and should always be discussed uh, earlier and, and as early as possible I think to bring them on the menu and that's an important you'll, you could call that a political agenda it is there we go um, um, and uh, selection of um, and uh, and work with texts in the classroom. We're definitely going to be doing that, and we're going to look at how um, uh, we're going to start off with motivation. I've looked at today. Um, those of you doing the other, I've actually chosen the same area of motivation. What we're going to do in this course is uh, we're going to build on it very quickly. Um, and so, um, if you did English two with me yesterday, um, Tuesday, yeah, I think we looked at DC and Ryan's. Um, self-determination theory you know which is classic 101 psychology and educational psychology um, if you haven't heard about that and you're in your fourth year then that's the kind of stuff we're going to be filling in with and just sort of crossing the dots um, we'll be looking at uh, I would have thought Dr Judy Willis uh, Caroline Dweck and a whole host of others um, very quickly before we're done here to build on that kind of uh, psychology and educational psychology that is peripheral to uh, this subject area. Getting a bit excited here. Um, uh, uh, and we will be looking at how we then apply it in the classroom. Uh, those will be your projects. Um, that will be your teaching placement. Um, so we've got an interplay of, you know, your own competence uh, and really building on it. But at the same time, when you see these um, 
what look like quite literary texts. Um, don't be afraid of the fact that we're looking to update them and we're looking for intertextuality. And when we talk about Gulliver's Travels, we might be thinking about Jack Black uh, in Gulliver, for example, in uh, the updated version, which I know most kids have seen and how that might also be an end product. Um, and of course, a um, uh, bit of background noise there. Um, <laughs> I'm on the road in Denmark, uh, in case you're wondering uh, whereabouts I am in this poorly lit room. Uh, and we're looking at the interplay between um, uh, reading and writing, um, how they're intertwined, if you will. Um, some of you, there's a chapter in Berktveit um, that's actually entitled that after. Uh, this descriptor in LK of six, uh, uh, and that's a book that you may well refer to. But you do notice I haven't really uh, pushed on theory and theoretical um, textbooks. I'm not a massive fan of textbooks. Uh, I know some of you may well have bought them already as you've gone through this course. Um, what I'll be aiming to do is um, where there's theory that I want you to look at, I think, A, you can find it yourself. You're a, <laughs> this is English 4, come on. Um, but also, um, for those of you who've also seen in English 2, which I think you know plays into English 4 here with the text and culture, I'll be providing you with stuff, to be honest, where I think you should be looking at a specific chapter. I have a 15% license in educational purpose, as you will as teachers and do as teachers. So why not use that? Um, you know, you uh, will be able to access this stuff. You don't need to own property um, you need to uh, be able to relate to it um, that's my p uh, personal position on this this is turning into a hashtag rant so we'll be looking at, um, at reading and writing and asking those questions as we read and write ourselves um, I know people are doing English too we're going to be doing a lots of narrative and descriptive writing um, you guys when you did English too before the others you might not have had exactly the same approach um, but we will be looking at uh, writing the English to people for example um, have blogs uh, on WordPress up and running which I should note here because that's not on my list for today um, uh, and uh, what we've got and I'll put some links up for that as well I don't need to show you right now because uh, I think that will take up too much time but we'll come back to that um, uh, Louise, Marlena and Guro or, or, or Guro are all blogging um, I hope you're going to continue with that blogging uh, and um, have a look at how we can develop that for you this term uh, and for those of you um, who are new to the game uh, it's just a journal it's a diary it's a project of extensive writing it's a way of supporting your writing and giving yourself something to say when it is time to to enter into the arena of structured or academic discussion um, so we'll come back to that later that's uh, that first theme if you will Uh, and then uh, integrated basic skills, it says, uh, and that's obviously something we'll be working with and looking at throughout the term. Uh, for me, uh, my main focus might be on the literature. Um, I'm a specialist, duh. Um, but obviously we'll be looking at how you then work with, um, for you in your own competence, um, oral skills, not in this first plenary session where I just bang on about stuff, but we're looking at oral skills structured oral skills, structured discussion, um, which you'll be doing, as I'll explain in a minute. Um, and also, obviously, promoting that in the classroom, um, you know, all the basic skills, including uh, digital, uh, as we may well look at um, uh, presenting and presenting digitally uh, as well in this arena, um, rather than um, doing it uh, traditionally, like, you know, things like presentations. Um, LK06, uh, uh, as a framework or a uh, framework of reference for um, developmental work or development, I'd just say, um, or uh, working uh, on um, uh, issues, probably I'm stilling uh, in the uh, subject area. Uh, and this is something that uh, will be integrated into all the literature lessons uh, and Tony will be uh, spending four sessions, Professor Berner, uh, and I'm going to ask him to, you know, choose his four main topics or areas that he wants to work with and basically come in and help you with that so uh, we've got strategies 
and and methods, uh, different ways of uh, organising teaching, um, which hopefully will be sort of integrated as well, whether it's TBL, CLIL, uh, cross-curricular approaches, um, PPP, um, lots of methodological ways of looking at it. And here we've got sort of a new framework as well, digitally. Assessment and uh, tools for assessment, which is Professor Berner's specialist area. So I'll ask him definitely to be doing that with you. Um, uh, and uh, differentiate teaching, use of different strategies uh, in developing a student. Uh, and I'm not sure if that student, I think that's you, uh, uh, student competence or competencies, if you will. Um, so that's the basic description, which you could have read, and I've sort of gone through it, but it's just as well to know that uh, that's how I see it and sort of in a little bit sort of tr begin to relate it to the course so I can come back to it later as well and how we're going to approach it. For me, this whole second section, whereas it's touched on all through section theme one, um, we've got Professor Berner doing four sessions, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, you're doing a, a term paper, uh, which you will present, defend, uh, etc. Um, so, uh, and then you've got your practicum, your teaching placement. So you've got a whole uh, playground, <laughs> sort of an arena or site, if you will, uh, to um, go through and, and practice. And, and also, I think, maybe choose the areas that you feel either you want to focus on, uh, because they are the areas that you want to have uh, the, the highest level of competence in, or that you want to structure your teaching or potentially that you want to focus on different areas. Like today, we're gonna to start off with uh, the educational uh, theory theme of sort of motivation, reluctance, and the actual psychology and educational psychology. I'm gonna develop behind it to, to why um, particularly teens, for example, do um, you know, Dr. Judy Willis's uh, theory of uh, of stress and stress reactions uh, that lead uh, teens to simply switch off. Uh, she calls it zoning out or acting out uh, due to uh, lack of input or stimulation. They get bored and they literally just shut down. Um, so we'll be looking at these kind of issues as well uh, and building them into uh, the course as we go along, um, mostly because I, I find it so interesting but also because I think these are important tools um, to, to have. Uh, it's the, the latest educational psychology based on the latest cognitive science and neuroscience. Um, so now I'm, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to go through um, a lot of this for the minute because you can see as well, the actual, the actual syllabus is sort of down there and that's the important thing. Uh, let's have a little look at this. Um, it says parts of the teaching are obligatory. Uh, those of you who know me will know that the reason why we record these sessions is because uh, I we do need attendance in this class because there's a limited number. Um, but um, obviously, if you do have issues like some people do today uh, in attending, it's quite simple. I expect you to um, follow the um, videos which will go into English for module one for this one lectures. Um, so the bits where uh, it's very much sort of one way communication, me uh, talking through things, they're all going to be uploaded or even whole class discussions are all going to be uploaded. So there's no reason why you should not be able, you should miss out on anything and definitely should also be able to review what we've done. Uh, secondly, as you'll see in a minute, down again in the course summary, um, that there are tasks, normally two for, or one uh, larger task for each session. Uh, and if you can't be present, then there's no need to be absent. You still can complete the task for the day, whether you do it individually or in a group. Um, and um, obviously, I'm going to, especially with such a small group, two seconds. A, um, we're going to notice if you don't fulfill your tasks, and B, um, all the tasks really do build on um, your final exam. 
So, uh, which is, we'll have a look in a minute, is a home exam um, worth 40% uh, for this section. Uh, and um, it, it should be quite clear what I'll do is the criteria will, will be based on having completed those tasks and that will be how you're assessed as well. So there's not really, for me, any advantage in not completing, you know, or at least if, if you can't be present, making sure that you're up to date with the course. Um, semester plan is actually down here, you see, now the term plan or course summary. Let's have a look here as well in these details. Um, two Arbez uh, Krav, it says here, uh, pass fail in order to get some sort of um, grade uh, in the subject area. Uh, and then what we have is, uh, uh, so I'm going to see how that works in here as well. I'll explain how I think that then becomes uh, linked to your grades. Uh, here, salute for dealing in the final assessment section. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm, I'm a Swedish speaker. Um, not Norwegian, I'm not just making it up, I'm just kind of looking at Norwegian and saying in Swedish, which is what I've been trying to do with Danish all week as well, but when I try and speak Danish, it just comes out as um, which is probably quite racist. Um, so let's have a look. You've got the presentation portfolio, uh, which is uh, uh, within the theme integrated uh, basic skills. Uh, obviously, you've got those four sessions with uh, the Prof. Berner there as well. You've got your teaching placement, um, and that is 60% of your uh, final grade. Um, it's uh, two texts, um, which is quite interesting as well, or um, uh, of which one is oral. Uh, uh, so, and... Uh, you have to have all of them in order to get a, like a final grade. So how does that work with the Arbets, Arbets Um So for me, those two things are combined. That's how we're going to have a look at this and we'll have a look in the syllabus. You'll see as we go through um, the, um, the course plan as well later, is that uh, those two course requirements are going to be part of the... Uh, you're going to do some kind of oral presentation of your term paper, as you can see down below. So you're going to do one paper, you're going to present your ideas, uh, you're going to defend that paper as an idea, um, and uh, that was going to be your um, final map, which is basically you do a term paper. Uh, we normally work on uh, a guideline of 2,500 words. Um, for those of you, if you're doing a BA concurrently, because you are, are apparently superhuman, then <laughs> then you can do it in the same area. That's absolutely fine. There's no reason why you shouldn't sort of uh, abbreviate that work as well uh, and really try to focus in uh, on what you want to do. Uh, when we do a term paper, we normally have a session where we look at ideas and present our ideas. Uh, we then go on to a session where you actually sort of test out your ideas in front of the group uh, with some kind of oral presentation. We might do that as uh, experience sharing. We might do it digitally in this format as well. Uh, and then um, what one would normally work into this as well as the term paper is, is, is a kind of a defense as well, where we do sort of group discussions and actually uh, in structured discussion, watch words, um, we will go through those uh, term papers and, and, and do those in groups. Um, you have to give me a bit of time to think through how that works out in this kind of forum. Uh, we do have only one meeting this term, and that will be too early. Um, so we will have to be doing this kind of thing online. Um, so we'll look at what the best way of doing that kind of structured discussion is. It may be for you to do it digitally in groups, record it, etc. Um, so that's how you go through your uh, final assessment uh, for that 60% is one single paper, uh, which is presented and defended in class uh, and then handed in. So the uh, the two upgov or texter, one of which is, a, is an oral text, that's the presentation of idea and defense uh, and you hand in the paper as well. 
uh, for final marking and that makes up 60% uh, of your final grade. On top of that, uh, the texts that we're doing, which we can see down there, um, uh, the text uh, society and culture section, um, you have a home exam, uh, which is short essay based, um, uh, covering 40% uh, of your final grade. And you can see as, as we go back and we'll look at the modules, the kind of things it's going to be in the areas that you'll, you'll have to cover, but it will be definitely looking at uh, dealing with uh, subject matter thematically, um, that's for sure, uh, and then connecting um, format, genre, conventions, uh, and potential uh, subjects and themes. More of that as we go along, uh, that should become quite apparent, I feel. So down at the bottom, are we all still with me? Are we all still okay out there? We're sort of... Uh, Got about another 20 minutes before we get to a break, and I'll just quickly continue to go through uh, all these bits. For those of you who aren't used to this, uh, instead of having a piece of paper with the course plan on it, uh, for, for me, it's always a diary, um, the calendar in Canvas. So here you can see that for the, just for a second, if I go whole screen and take away the text wall, Click into the first one. Hello. There we go. Uh, over here uh, is the calendar feed. If you click on that, you can copy this link and then you can pop that into your Google Calendar, your iCal, if it's still called that, I think it is, Outlook, etc. Uh, that means everything you then get will get updated and even the details for each course event uh, will be included. Uh, I'm going to click on those. So this should appear in notes for the iCal event. This is where uh, content will be uh, outlined rather like a traditional Word document. Uh, I do have a traditional Word document. I just find that if you keep on updating it and sharing it, uh, you drown yourself in paperwork, whereas we have these tools for it. So you can expect uh, each session as we go along, sorry, there you can see here in the calendar format, to be filled, not hugely in advance. Um, we've got different people working on it and I expect it to be updated. I'll be updating next week. Um, as you can see, it's mostly me uh, teaching you here, which is cool at this stage where it's literature. Um, so here we've got uh, all, the, all the necessary information. Um, uh, we've got the module name, which is far too long. Uh, I had to come up with something ages ago, and I wrote this, and then I was like, okay, maybe I could have come up with something better. Um, the idea of a new world and new worlds uh, is the sort of the the age of expansion uh, and discovery uh, that's kind of the loose historical period that we're covering. I just clicked out there. Uh, I have for each session, then I will look at the sort of text, society and culture sort of content. So what we're going at from my point of view is a lit bod, as I'm now going to refer to myself as. That's totally not a thing, so don't use that with other people. They'll think you're weird. Uh, so today we have forms and formats, genres, uh, travel writing, um, as that sort of builds through a lot of the texts in the course and is an important genre. Uh, and links in with the theme. We've got a little look at conventions, questions about the state of nature, nature versus nurture, civilization versus nature, the savage and the civilized, um, Trump and the rest of the world, um, to bring that uh, up to date with the, the orange troll-faced man. Uh, we're also going to be looking at cultural texts as we go along, as we know, um, and uh, to start today, we might have one um, per session, I think is the way I'm generally going to do it. Uh, and I could not start a session uh, like this without looking at Hobbes' Leviathan. Um, you might think it's kind of heavy to begin with, but you'll see as you go along how relevant and how pertinent Hobbes is, or maybe you'll reject it. 
perhaps I will, I hope you'll question it, maybe reject it and then rethink it later. Um, and I've pulled out of that as well, one of an important takeaway. Um, bellum omnium contra omnes, uh, the war of uh, all against all or every man against every man or each against the other, which is the concept um, that possibly uh, underlines sort of colonial expansion and colonialism as well. The fact that somehow it was nature was a war. So whoever was most civilized had to dominate. It was kind of like a duty. We'll come back to that. Um, so, so you can see we, we cover some basic sort of ideas and concepts, um, trying to sort of not shove them at you, but they develop organically as we go along. Uh, and those build on those um, that we have there as well in English too. And I'm hoping that, you know, if at any point you want to go back, um, that you've done English too, that you've worked on your own competence in reading literature a little bit, thought about some of the terms and literary terms. Um, I'm a, personally, I'm a massive fan of uh, using as few as possible, uh, because I really do think that even when you're writing in, a, in literature as, as a specialist, people should be able to understand what the hell you're talking about. So uh, even though we started off with a bit of Latin, um, we're going to translate everything. I think the more, the more simply you express yourself, the better off you are in, in terms of talking about stories. Um, and so uh, if you blog, uh, which some of you are already doing, I think that's a great idea, which is just to phrase and rephrase, say things in posh ac academic ways, but say them in simple ways as well and try and find a voice and the ability to change between registers uh, to be formal uh, and to be informal. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at educational theory as well as we go along and all my sessions will normally have something that I will pick out and look at. For those of you doing English too, um, because uh, this is the first time I'm doing them concurrently and I've just sort of worked on the structure. We do touch on uh, the same thing that you would have done on Tuesday, which is DC and Ryan, self-determination theory. It's so important. I want us to get that vocabulary and that theory on board. But then what we're going to do is we're going to imply it in a whole different way in English form. And then we're going to stretch ideas of uh, theories of motivation uh, psychological and educational, psychological and uh, um, from cognitive science and neuroscience. So we're going to push them much, much further. Uh, so that is something that we'll be working into our discussion uh, task. And, and I'm hoping that somewhere along the line, you're going to find or latch on to uh, areas that, that really appeal to you, texts that speak to you, cultural texts that speak to you, themes that speak to you, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, bits of educational theory as well, which just genuinely interest you. Because um, uh, um, I think that's that kind of passion and interest that DC and Ryan would call intrinsic motivation is key to being a good teacher. Um, I think as you can probably sense as well, like I find this area super interesting and it, it makes it super easy to sort of get that across. Uh, on every section here as well, I've got to cover the online site as well, there will be a task list. Uh, I don't mess about. Um, I am a big fan of TBL and task-based learning of CLIL, cross-curricular approaches and content-based learning. And I've put those up here because that's kind of, though I'm not touching on theorists, not today, mm -hmm, but later, and it's coming. Um, I think these are important uh, issues uh, to think about and, and to get on board. And for me today, I know that, you know, I'm doing completely opposite your videos off. Um, we're not really, you know, you're not having to engage and this is one way communication, it's monologue, come on. Um, uh, as we go through it, I guarantee that uh, more than 50% of what we do will be content-based or task-based learning where you uh, um, find meaning yourself, where you uh, develop your own knowledge, what we call deep learning as well. We'll come back to that later. <laughs> So that's important. And the other thing with books and texts is, uh, you know, for me, we're going to start off with the, one of the key issues is always motivation. 
Um, and so we're going to look at motivation and we're going to talk about motivation and we're going to make sure that we uh, know about um, the most important um, founding theories in um, motivation like DC and Ryan's SDT, self-determination theory. Unfortunately, it makes me think of um, something else, SDT, um, and some of the terminology. Um, a lot of you may well be aware of it already, and I do understand that if you're doing English too, we're also touching on it, but we're not using it to the same degree. We're just sort of popping it in there. When we do the tasks, um, we have a uh, Google site. Uh, there's the address and there is the password. I've left it as horse, capital H, 2018, exclamation mark. Uh, it might become apparent later why it says horse there. So I know many of you know already. So, and that will take you, uh, you can log in and we all log into the same site. And I, at the moment, I found that to be my 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 best practice situation where I can uh, give direct, uh, I can get directly into what you're doing as a group. I can give you written feedback quickly. Um, we can monitor and uh, uh, access each other's work and uh, we can produce knowledge ourselves uh, and we can upload video. So um, that will take you to the Google Drive. Let's have a look. Let's have... Now again, you should, you'll be seeing more of the screen than me. I'm keeping it to one side for the video. Um, so if I sort of am um, uh, messing about a little bit, it's because um, I uh, have to keep my view for for the for the video section. You'll see that as you look at the lectures. Um, hmm. Right. So what's going on? Ah, oh, look, Group Six who weren't at the lecture on Tuesday. This is a perfect example. Did the work. Well done them. So I'll be going in on my break and giving them uh, some ipsative uh, feedback, some praise. Um, but I'll also give him some formative feedback as well. Mr. Berner will take you into all that as well later, I think, at length. Um, so that's really good to see what a lovely example. Uh, Annika, Jana and Lindy were in Nultod on, on uh, Tuesday. They couldn't attend the lecture, but the lectures have gone out on YouTube. They've been able to see it. They've got the task instructions and they've completed it. And there it is. Um, of course, what I've done uh, now is uh, I've begun to try and uh, organize them into uh, files or folders on this drive as well. So we are English for module one, New Worlds, uh, and I will, we've, so we've got our first folder, which covers our first three sessions um, that we can go through. Um, so uh, when you create uh, a work, you can just simply go new once you've logged in here you'll know that because you'll be logged in as uh, this uh, he's a samurai uh, from the 2017 film 13 assassins a japanese film i'll be trying to work in as much uh, world cinema as possible because i'm a massive fan of japanese uh, chinese and korean cinema um, uh, so you should be able to clip into that folder or pop anything. You can drag them into that folder as well. And let's, let's have a look at what we did. Um, there should, therefore, it's up there, but it should be in here, uh, which Malena Guro and uh, Louise were here on Tuesday as well. You can see uh, in here we've got the groups and tasks that were done. I think it's important to create a document and, and do some form of notation to formalize what you're doing, because this is an academic arena. Uh, and so I think it's very important that also provides a base for the groups who then uh, recorded uh, their discussions uh, and they've used different formats. Some of them have used the record function in OmniJoin if you're going to split up and maybe we'd have two groups here really uh, and do group discussions. Um, then it gives you a chance to uh, have an open discussion, uh, potentially have a note taker or do those notes together, summarize, because um, I hope some of you might have done in English one. If you've done it with me, we did, um, uh, we did, um, we, we looked at the fact that summarizing stuff is an important function in note taking. And here, when you do summarize, you have to think about it quite clearly. Uh, which means you're going to paraphrase and you're going to reorganize information, which should aid the memory process. Um, and then uh, what these groups have done is I've normally asked for structured discussion 
with a digital submission, which means that you can then um, prepare yourselves and do a, a short three, four, five minute summary of your discussion together as a group, uh, which you can also cons consider an oral text and even more than that, an oral academic text. Um, so that's the goal of our groups and discussions, and that's how we're going to do it. We will upload uh, tasks to the Google Drive. Well, I'll have a look at the tasks, and perhaps let's do that first before we look at YouTube. Um, so, for example, the tasks this morning, um, and I'm going to ask you to do this after our break, um, is uh, Morning Book Club. And there's quite a few of you, and I think we'll probably be able to go into let's say three groups this morning. Do you have working groups, Marlena? Um, so here it's present choice of set books for module one, um, which you've been asked to go into um, and choose out of a selection of five books, which generally cover that loose state of nature, new worlds period. Um, and so you all will have made different choices and the entire course is structured around choice. Um, not set texts at a choice or limited choice at least. Uh, consider how, uh, why or how text might be used in classroom. Consider why texts were chosen for this course. Make notes to summarize discussion in Google Docs doc. Very important to, to keep that, that uh, stage up. It allows me to give you very quick and effective assessment. Record structured discussion in groups. Use OmniJoin or other and upload to Google Drive for feedback. So you can see already that's um, our first task uh, and quite like a nice sort of cash task for this morning. Uh, and for the afternoon, we've got a far more detailed and structured task with a lot more scaffolding, which is going to be based upon a lot of the information that I'm going to present and we're going to look through after lunch. Um, so we've seen the Google Drive um, and we've seen the list of lectures, which I'll probably... Uh, I want to have a break in 10 minutes, so uh, let's have a look at that course summary and then I'm going to go back to the module for today with the reading and that links to to YouTube. Okay, it's quite a lot to sort of take on board here. Um, I hope we're all sort of still there, newbies. So we saw that each lecture is going to be filled. We've, I'm just restructuring this. I, I do apologize. I've got Prof. Berner on and there's been a change of roster. Um, we're basically going to be doing uh, first module at one, two and three. Um, in fact, these numberings are, are, are incorrect. We'll then go straight through. Um, it will be lit one, lit two, lit three. That's the first module on new worlds. Uh, uh, Robinson Crusoe, Gulliver's Travels, some awesome stuff in there. Uh, books which often considered children's books these days as well. Uh, then we'd go Lit 4, Lit 5, Lit 6. That's incorrectly, incorrect nomenclature there. Um, taking us through to January there, and that's going to be Module 2, which, um, if I remember rightly, it's probably called Empire and Colonialism. Um, and takes us to a slightly later period uh, and takes us through to um, the awesome Heart of Darkness, I think, in 1903, which is the end of that sort of particular section, which is, you know, Apocalypse Now, um, uh, which is hopefully not something that younger members might know, but um, is definitely has uh, a room uh, or license to play with in the classroom. Jungle Book's on it as well. Uh, there's just been uh, a reboot of that, um, hasn't there? Uh, Mowgli's out on Netflix at the moment. Um, so we'll do that. Then we will do uh, through to... Oh, didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Then we'll do through to... I'm going to break at 10, guys, just so you know. So this is your eight-minute warning. Uh, we'll then go... So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we'll do module three. Now, this is going through to February. Uh, with book th uh, three, if you find yourself struggling in terms of uh, keeping up with the texts, I'm going to, when you look at the YouTube thing as well, all the texts will be there. I've put summaries for every single book and links to top notes, which is a bit more interactive than Spark Notes, which quite frankly is boring. Um, I was looking through Spark Notes, the Scarlet Letter last night, and I was literally falling asleep. 
the top notes ones are quite good there's also the thug summaries which are hilarious so you can keep up with what the texts are you can intertextualize you that will be links to audio books um, you might want to think okay i'm going to choose a graphic novel here like to kill a mockingbird which i don't have right here but which is awesome um just to sort of you know and then maybe i might even say look i'm going to choose a film text here uh, and i'm going to choose two novels talk to me about it because if you're struggling in terms of time there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to still get to terms or to grips with the texts anyway okay and i wanted you to think that maybe okay i will choose a children's classic version because lots of books like treasure island and robinson crusoe were turned into children's classics and children's illustrated classics and abbreviated in the 19th century for a new whole new audience um, so uh, talk to me about that the versions on the reading list are not set it's quite all right to have a graphic novel or a comic in there as well so you can sort of vary your reading more about that later um, and then we will uh, uh, be uh, finishing off uh, it says reading week here <laughs> because I was going to go on holiday or it was half term and I was going to have my daughter but she's actually going I've bought her a ticket to go and see her best friend in Singapore because uh, she goes to an international school and the worst thing about international schools is your friends leave as the parents go on contract um, so we may well look at putting in the final lit there uh, so we finish and then you go your theory sessions with Prof Werner and then you go away on your teaching placement and when we come back we just do our you know our final assessment of uh, the term papers and we're done uh, uh, or perhaps you're coming to york more of that later um, so that's the overall sort of thing at the moment all you have to think about and focus on is first module okay don't think too far ahead um, speaking of modules So this is the engine room, module one. Um, for the moment, um, don't have time for York right now, but there's a York signing up thing. You guys are invited to York in uh, week 15. Some of you I know might be coming via other courses. Um, you should have had information about it from James. He's normally on the ball. I know James is also going at the same week with other groups though. He's, um, we'll see about that. Um, here you've got York signing up, which we can discuss later. Um, rather than hand in new papers, there are lots of papers that you can read. DC and Ryan, you could go to the ELT journal, and I'll probably add some reading in for you guys when when you show interest or engage with it. Here I've just linked to a very good uh, and brief summary sort of um, a video, which is in the theory section of YouTube. Uh, I normally put uh, out a PowerPoint, even if I don't use it. Um, I've got a reading for today. There'll be one cultural text reading per session. Uh, and then we've got the reading list and YouTube to do. So on YouTube, oh, I think you have to go externally. Do we not? I think we need to go to an external link. Shush, I don't know if you can hear that. I don't think you do actually, because I think the video goes slightly by somewhere else. I'll pull that over now i know some of you are quite used to me doing this kind of stuff let's have a look at what we've got here for every module i have gone in and i'll see what i can find in terms of uh, stuff um, uh, plant the apes damn you damn you all to hell it's robinson crusoe treasure island ben gunn it's robinson crusoe robinson crusoe is a Recurring trope and subgenre, the last man uh, uh, that uh, reappears in culture and into text. So I'll be adding to this as we go along, and you can add to this. But what I've put in are some, you know, some of the classics, which can be a bit li little difficult to stomach, but are worth looking at. This 1996 version of Gulliver's Travels with Ted Danson, it's a two parter done on the BBC. I don't know if you, you know it, Louise. Absolutely fantastic. It's super brilliant. Just happened to find it there i have no shame i've linked to it the spark note summary is so boring i'm gonna to have to find other ones for that one top 10 on the other hand is far more interesting in the sense that it's got visual material and it used cultural text there for example gulliver's travels with jack black which is well worth considering 
uh, Huck Finn, classic as well, Call of the Wild. I've just got that over there. I read uh, uh, some of it last night as well. And I'll be popping in any audiobook versions I can find of anything. So there's plenty to, to get to get to sort of grips with over here on the YouTube channel for every model, module. If you find something, please add. Really important. Um, so let's just uh, pop back as well, because I want to break in a couple of minutes as well. And I'll... Um, I know there'll be questions, uh, but I'm happy that I've managed to, to sort of time it. Um, I think once you did your, your list, uh, some of these might have been commuted to electronic versions. I'm not 100% sure. Yes, these are electronic resources. It doesn't matter what copy you get of these books. Um, I do have... It goes crashing off, quite extraordinary. Um, I do have, for example, I love Chris Riddell's illustrated version of Gulliver's Travels. It's just a book to cherish forever. Um, fantastic. You'll see pictures of that in the PowerPoint presentations as well. It's an abridged version of the text. There are illustrated classics, as you can see, Walker illustrated classics here. There are children's uh, classics versions of nearly everything as well, like this one of Call of the Wild and White Fang. Um, so you can maybe think about choosing a children's classic and thinking about, OK, this was abridged in the uh, you know uh, 19th century, the early 1800s. You can choose, um, as we look further down at the moment, we've got Gulliver's Travels, Robinson Crusoe. That's the first book, then Gulliver's Travels. Uh, from later on, we have The Scarlet Letter by Nigel Hawthorne. Uh, you can think about The Handmaid's Tale when, when you uh, read, read that. Um, I've included it because it's about civilization going into the savage and, and, and sort of demonstrating it, the, how savage it is and what a state of nature might really be and what would be the noble state of nature. Now you've got Huck Finn fantastic river journey travel writing and the, the ultimate bit of uh, american pr primitivism by jack london in the late 19th century the call of the wild um, but you might want to choose for example his uh, a graphic novel um, films are always worth thinking about the great gatsby baz lerman's version splendid um, uh, so we can those are discursive and these are lead texts as i've set up the top as well Whew, I say, good Lord. Um, let's pull that over there. So that takes us, let's go back home for the moment. Eh? That takes us to 10 o'clock. I think we should take a break. Uh, how are we all? Oh, hi, Gira. Sorry, I wasn't checking there as well. We all OK. So that was a bit of a rant. I do understand that. Um, I suggest we take a goodly break at this stage, if that's OK with you guys. And then I'm going to set you a task uh, and get you to doing some group work as a sort of intro before lunch. So I'm, I'm going to Are you guys cool with half an hour. And we'll restart at, let's say, 10.25, 4, 10.30 to start. So. Uh, we can discuss that when we come back. You can all audio video in for a bit and we can talk about it because I've got no no issues with that. Um, I'm going to say this. Let's. I'm going to call it on the video now. Um, so for those of you who are on catch up uh, or watching this on the YouTube channel where the lectures will also go, uh, then uh, we're going to stop for the moment. Uh, come back for uh, the presentation of... Uh, New Worlds, uh, and we'll be looking at uh, some ideas of literature and educational theory afterwards.